You talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean I yes. defend it. Well, okay. You, no, you, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you talk Observing a lot. Observing that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world? Well, people attack it, right? What's that? And you don't. People attack it. Attack it's inherently what? Attack the hierarchies of society is inherently unjust, right? Well, they're they're unjust, yes. but they're also useful. Okay, so you, you. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back again with a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out students tries to frame Jordan Peterson instantly disproven. Okay, this is going to be amazing to watch, and I really love Jordan Peterson videos. I always learn every time. So let's get right into this video. Uh, so the the idea that I've put thought into this is perhaps a optimistic one, but. Uh... As you might imagine, you've been a topic of conversation on this campus a lot in the past week or so, certainly among a lot of us who discuss politics. And one of the things that sort of united people who like and dislike a lot of your ideas is that we appreciate your defense of free speech, and we appreciate you coming here to talk about it with us. Uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is Professor Van Dyke addressed the distinction between you and Jonathan Haidt. And you mentioned this as sort of a temperamental one. And I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but I, I noticed you've, you've made a lot of more sort of substantively inflammatory claims, like in the course of this lecture, you called uh, pe the authors of Facebook posts demons and totalitarians. Uh, in past events, you've called them things like uh, uh, I love to see the students face. cultural Marxists. Uh, you've called them, a, a, I believe, a fifth column that is committing treason against the West. And it seems to me this is more than temperamental. This is a substantive difference. And, and it's another, a substantive yes, difference, and, yes. And another thing you've done is that unlike height, you have a more sort of comprehensive political program. You've talked a lot in defense of traditional hierarchies, both of gender, of class, so on, uh, though emphatically not of race. Uh, and so it seems that I haven't talked about defense of traditional hierarchies in terms of gender and class. That's not true. Well, you've talked about hierarchies in society. You've talked yeah, about Yeah, that's yes. true. I well, have done that. Not but that I haven't class? justified them on the basis of gender and class. You, or, you or whatever it well, okay, you, you talk Not about, okay. That's an important yes, distinction. Okay, but you, you defend hierarchies in society in a way that you talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean I yeah. defend it. Well, okay. You, you, no, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you talk Observing a lot. Observing that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world? Well, people attack it, right? What's that? You don't. People attack it. Attack as inherently what? Attack the hierarchies of society is inherently unjust, right? Well, they are, they're unjust, but yes. they're also useful. Okay, so you, you, def you say they're useful. Some well, look, people look, look at it this way. Okay, look at it this way. <laughs> You obviously think that it's worthwhile to stand up and ask a question. Yes. So you think that standing up and asking a question is better than yes. not standing up and asking a question. Yes. Okay, that's a hierarchy. Yes. Of values. Yes. Okay, without the hierarchy of values, you couldn't act. Of course. No, no, not of course. Well, wait. It's you, partly why I'm I, defending I the hierarchy. Here. Without no a hierarchy, there's no the impetus to act. Hierarchy, right? What's that? There is a hierarchy in society, right? No, there's multiple hierarchies okay, there are in multiple society. hierarchies in society, right? Yes. And you say that they are based in, you, you invoke the lobster, right? That they are based in, uh, in nature. Yes. I said that they were inevitable. Yes, yes. that they were inevitable. Some right. people that disagree with that. doesn't mean that they're but, good. But my point is that, uh, this is generally relevant to it, you have a broader point than free speech. This is one of the things you talk about, yes? Yes. Okay. Whereas I think there are some other activists who focus on more exclusively I'm not on an free activist. Speech. There are some other individuals who engage in public political speech. Okay. Yeah. Who, who focus more exclusively on free speech, whereas you have other goals in mind. But one of the things that your more inflammatory language, and it's fair, it's a substantive disagreement, has done, I think, is, is it's politicized this free speech to an extent that someone like Haidt hasn't. I've noticed that when someone hears the term free speech now, they associate it with a specific set of thinkers, often as viewed as on the extreme right. And I think. I, I think arguably that's the problem of all factions in society because free speech should be a universal value. Polls certainly suggest that it's coming under increasing threat from both sides. But I, I suppose the heart of my question, in addition to, of course, these other observations, is that do you believe free speech is your primary end or do you believe these other points you're making are important? Because I've heard you a bunch of times defend free speech sort of contextually, like you've complained about some of the laws in Canada that you dislike, that they institutionalize false facts into the law. But it seems Ooh. to me that in absolute really speech makes no preference as to true or false. The point is 
that's something you are being forced to say something. It would be as bad as if, if you were forced to say something that is true, because the point of free speech is that you can say whatever you want, right? No, and, the point of free speech is so that you can think your way through yes. life without running like but headlong being into told a brick to wall. Think position A versus perfect position B is just as bad, right? Even if one is true and the other is not. Okay, well, there was a bunch of questions. Yes. Good job, by the way. <laughs> well, actually, wait, can I just ask <laughs> one additional addendum? <laughs> Which is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think the, the politicization of free speech is, is by far the biggest threat to free speech, because this is always No, been the a, radical leftists are the biggest threat well, to free okay, speech. Well, okay, so this is a disagreement. <laughs> but I, I get your as point. As the professor agreed, uh, alluded to in previous questions, the substantive threats to free speech in much of the world, in Europe certainly, I think in the United States as well from the government, have come from the radical right. And I think it's fair to say that on the specific <coughs> narrow subset of certain departments on liberal arts colleges, it's fair to say a threat comes from the left, though its scope is in dispute. But my question is, do you think that the way you talk about free speech, the way you link it to specific issues, the way you use inflammatory language, and the way you seem to make it, you seem to defend a specific set of free speech. There are certainly plenty of instances of free speech attacked on the other side that you don't mention as much. Do you think you risk politicizing this? Because it seems to me yes. that- Yes. Okay, and, and do you not think that's a far greater threat? Because for example, the no. NRA, well, sorry, the NRA is a group in the United States that defends guns rights, right? Okay, hold it, hold yes. it. We need a question. Yes. Okay. okay. I mean, My like I said, is, you're doing fine, do you but think, it's just too yes. much. Like, I can't keep it do straight. Do you think that your behavior risks politicizing it, and do you think that politicization is justified? I think my behavior risks politicizing it, yes. I would rather it not be politicized, and I'm doing what I can to manage that risk. However, it's become political in my country because the government implemented compelled speech legislation. So I wasn't complaining about that before it became political. Now, and there, are, there is a time, even when you're detached in some sense from the political realm, that you can't be detached anymore. Well, I'm not happy with the fact that this has become politicized. You could say that I haven't done a stellar job in ensuring in every possible manner that this has remained neutrally apolitical. Probably true. You know, but I'm not particularly unhappy with the way things have gone so far. So, and I'm not happy with the radical left. And so, if they're irritated at me, so much the better, as far as I'm concerned. So, have I conducted myself perfectly? It's like, uh, undoubtedly no. So, um, I'm, I've got more than my fair share of faults, and a temper is one of them. But, um, yeah. I'm muddling through. So now I know there's much, much more to say, and every, but I have some questions from the audience, so I'd like to uh, read those, and, and I'll try again uh, just to divide up the time and the questions, uh, hopefully as fairly as possible. Um, so uh, Professor Peterson, let's start with you. Uh, so this question says, um, you present your issue with Bill C-16 to be that the infringement of freedom of expression regarding gender pronouns is a problem. Do you hold the same stance with other discriminatory language in the Human Rights Code, such as being able to use uh, racist uh, terms uh, with regard to students? And if you believe that one of these things is a violation but not the other one, why? I'm not sure I read that out okay. all that yeah. well, but you get the idea. Okay, well, so one, one thing I would like to point out be before I answer that, just so you all notice, is that I have, in fact, been denounced today. And what I am saying has, in fact, been described as hate propaganda. So one thing I'd like to suggest to you, every single person in the audience, you're next. That is hopeful. So keep it in mind. You denounced him? All right. So with regards to the question, well, first of all, I don't think that these issues are the same. I don't think they're the same at all. I mean, I've think, been thinking about the pronoun thing, you know, because one of the things that people, it put me back on my heels for a while because the claim was basically, well, it's something like, why doesn't the mean professor just play nice and, and respect people by using their pronouns? And it took me like three weeks to unpack that because who gets questioned about pronoun use? I don't know why the hell I use the pronouns I use. I use them because they're part of the language. I use he and she because that's what everyone uses. And so then I had to think about, well, why, 
why do we in fact use pronouns? And we use them in part for the same reason that we use other categories, and that's to simplify the world for functional purposes, roughly speaking. But then I was thinking, mm. well, is the use of he and she a mark of respect? And the answer to that is, well, no, it's not a mark of respect. It can't be a mark of respect. What you call four billion people can't be a mark of respect, right? It's a, it's a mark of basic categorization. And so then the claim comes up, well, if someone wants you to use a particular pronoun, then you're disrespecting them if you don't. It's like, hmm, okay, let's think that through a bit. Well, that assumes that when I'm using he or she for, for people in, you know, in normal parlance, that I'm actually indicating my respect for them. And that's not true. It's like, if I don't know you, I class classify you generically. And basically, I classify you in terms of how you present yourself publicly. I suppose that's true. your gender expression. And then I nail you with whatever pronoun seems to fit. It has nothing to do with respect. And besides that, mm. you bloody well don't get to demand my respect. Why should you? You know, I mean, it's not like I respect everyone. That's a foolish thing to do. You respect people who are respectable. You know, you, you make mm. value distinctions between people, and that doesn't mean you illegally discriminate against them. Those aren't the same thing. But I'm all for value judgments. If, if you don't buy value judgments, then why bother learning anything? Why, why bother doing anything? Why go from one point in your life to another if the next point isn't better in some manner? Hmm. So don't tell me that I'm not respecting people when I don't use their gendered pronouns. And the other thing is, I don't buy this whole idea that the people who are putting this legislation forward are valid representatives of the trans community. That's what they say they are. We have mechanisms for deciding whether someone's a valid representative of a community, and that generally involves democratic voting. I've received at least 20 letters from transsexual people who are on my side, and by the way, zero from others, believe it or not, who are perfectly happy with the idea of gendered pronouns. It's just they want to be the other one. Now, you can have a discussion about that, and there's lots of things to be said about it, but the idea that this community that's coming out and these, demanding these rights is somehow representative of this homogenous, oppressed minority, I think is rubbish. Hmm. Well, that leads us to our next question. And for this question, I'm going to ask uh, both uh, Professor Klossman and Professor Bryson uh, to comment on it. Um, so one of the objectives of the transgender and queer rights movement is to enter into public conscience um, in a way. And this uh, person asks, uh, this can only occur through public conversation. Uh, do you worry that it's, it may uh, not be possible to have thoughtful discussion if there is government restriction about uh, this kind of speech? And do you worry that it would skew discuss, discussion in one uh, direction or another? Uh, so perhaps uh, Professor Kosman first, and then Professor Bryson. So I've spent a career being concerned about the way in which um, thoughtful discussion is often shut down. And I've been concerned about it on the right, I've been concerned about it on the left, and I've been concerned about it in the mushy middle. And, and I think that Professor Peterson has actually performed some of this today, insofar as he just said that he was denounced here today and that they're gonna come for you next. So the thing is about speech is that everybody gets it. And you say something and you then get criticized. So Professor Peterson hasn't been denounced, some might want to, um, but he has been severely criticized. And that is actually what speech does. That is what speech does. I think that, um, I think that there is an important way to have public discussions um, around a whole range of issues. I would welcome a discussion on the role of hate speech provisions. I would welcome a discussion around the role of hate speech and its desirability. Um, about whether the Supreme Court of Canada is right or not right in upholding its constitutionality. But I would like to have that debate with someone who is knowledgeable about the law. Thank you. And Professor Bryson. One of the big questions that I had to deal with in considering whether or not to accept the very generous offer uh, invitation of the University of Toronto to come here today would be the impact of this event on trans and gender non-binary people, uh, specifically at the University of Toronto and much more generally. And so 
Whereas I would say that I recognize practices of peer review, and practices of peer review are not denouncement. Practices of peer review are practices that we utilize to make assessments about knowledge claims. Whereas I would fully appreciate being able to enter into a discussion about gender and gender identity and issues around trans culture as a means of practicing peer review, I think the difficulty that we've had, and we've managed to reproduce this difficulty here today, uh, characterized just now by Dr. Peterson as simplifying the world for functional purposes. Simplifying the world for functional purposes is not what I recognize to be academic practice. This is not how we relate to knowledge. And so what? I think that there is a concern when we don't subject claims that are being made as knowledge claims by people who carry titles at great Canadian universities, when we don't treat those knowledge claims in the same way that we would in any other field. And when they're knowledge claims made about members of minority groups, embattled, vulnerable, marginalized members of minority groups, then I think that we all need to be very concerned about how it is that we're changing what we think we do in the university, which is supposed to be about the advancement of knowledge and excellence. Thank you. Oh my goodness, how in the world is the first woman who spoke a lawyer and the other second one a professor? Sorry, I'm having code. Um, this is crazy. Um, let's start from the beginning. The students who debated, um, professor who was trying to um, get some clarity, um, told professor that his speech at Hot Foods was older people. Uh, uh, the guy I tried to do his research properly, and I acknowledge him for that. His research was beautiful. Professor Jordan Peterson also acknowledged him and tell him your research was actually amazing. Um, he did well, but I only want an explanation of how our voice has, because we all have free speech. And when I'm saying something, either being hurtful or not being hurtful, we speak out. So you denouncing Jordan Peterson from using pronoun, it makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely no sense at all. Because he did not say wrong. I've watched several of Jordan Peterson videos a lot and I've heard his speeches and he keeps on saying this about the left. Every single time the left keeps on bringing this aspect of and pronouns and pronouns and pronouns and pronouns bullshit. We all know he or she. You can't you you can't make us to start calling you they or cow or goat or dog. Or you you it's it's serious, it's really really alarming. I will come to the the first lawyer, she was saying absolutely rubbish. She was first making sense, but then she started talking nonsense. Then the professor, I don't know how the last lady who spoke is a professor. I don't know how, who gave her the degree. I don't know how she was able to become a professor because she she's very, 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 very silly. Forgive me for using that word. But she's very silly. Don't forgive me. She's very silly. And I'm going to say it. For talking to us, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson, like that, and making him feel like he has no right to use pronouns of how he says things to us people. Who, how dare you? We all have freedom of speech. That last lady right there, she actually provoked me. I, I hate her entire speech from the start to the end. I hate her speech. And they call her a professor. Dave, we are doomed. America, we are, we are, we are all doomed. It's serious. This, this is something we are all seeing. And people are voicing out their opinion and they're being shot down. Like Judah Peterson, they're being shot down every single time. This is very alarming and it's something we should all be talking about. Because if they're able to do Joda Peterson this, what are they going to do to us now? Because Joda Peterson, say, Peterson said they have denounced him for using pronouns, that we are next. And that is the truth. Very soon it will be on social media. When you use some pronouns, they will just mute the, the aspect you said something. They will just mute it. It's serious. Because this is how it starts from. 
I don't know who is in the administrative board. I don't know who, I don't know who is making those decisions. It's it suck, really. Like it's terrible, and it's it it hurts that someone who has the interest of the people at heart. You can't tell four billion people to use a specific program for you because you are the only one that have that have the entire dictionary. No. We have four billion people in this world that we have freedom of speech to say whatever we want. We we identify you by who you are, what we are saying. You don't tell us to start calling you the diff a different pronoun because you identify as identify as what? Then tomorrow you change your pronoun to something else and you want us to keep on calling you. Ah, oh, Jesus. That really temporary our freedom of speech. This is this is serious. This is really, really serious. Like, we shouldn't take this lightly because they're coming for us next. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as can subscribe to China. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales on.